Hello, and this is a demonstration of a class one filling. Now this is an air turbine handpiece. Uh, you have electric, and so my preferred setting so far for electric is to go ahead and use 100,000 RPM uh, with the 1 to 5 uh, ratio setting. And I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate though with a, this is a 330 burr, it's a uh, uh, inverted pair, and I'm going to demonstrate on tooth number 18, so for a class 1. Class 1 filling, you'll essentially be following the grooves of the teeth, and you'll be wanting to go uh, to a depth of about 1.5 and an isthmus width of about 1 to 1.5. So I'll go ahead and start the prep. What I like to do first is kind of begin in the middle, do a punch cut down to about where I think 1.5 is, uh, open it up laterally, and then measure. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate that right now. As you can tell, I've made my punch cut down uh, probably to about two-thirds of the way down the cutting surface of the burr. And once we get here, it's a lot easier to go ahead and move laterally from there. Instead of coming in, cutting shallow, and then going down further and cutting again laterally at a deeper depth, it's easier just to go ahead and do the the down your plunge cut down to where you want it and then move laterally. You'll have to excuse the old burr too the tip of the burr when it gets to this point you'll want to replace it. I don't think I have the luxury of a another 330 but I might go ahead and try the carbide 330. This is just called a 330. It doesn't have the D designation because it doesn't have it's not diamond. So let's see if we can get a better cutting surface based off from this. As you'll note so far, I'm keeping the burr perpendicular to the uh, plane of occlusion here. And an easy way to check that is by checking the top of the shank here and making sure that the angulation of this part of the handpiece is uh, parallel to the plane. As you can tell here, I'm also uh, moving laterally up against the wall. I'm not attacking the wall from the center of the prep, uh, but rather kind of shaving away uh, with the wall of the preparation.
Now where you choose to extend <clears throat> your buckle, uh, buckle and lingual extensions here, I would probably put them, if this is the center of the tooth, I'd probably put it about halfway to the uh, cuspal ridge here. That's about halfway. And then on these dovetail extensions, they don't have to be very far up, but you want to capture a little bit of that secondary groove that's there as well. This preparation is pretty much completed. I can go back in, and what I would do at this point with your electric hand pieces is, is go back through, turn it down to about 20,000 RPM uh, with the same burr on, and go back through and just kind of smooth things up a little bit and come in here nice and slow. Get the floor real nice and smooth. Get your walls nice and smooth because they won't be, when you're first starting out, they won't be as smooth as I've done. But then you'll want to remember also to uh, just kind of come in here and have a nice kind of a paintbrush effect uh, motion, if you would, to kind of sweep things to smooth it instead of attacking, you know, like this, back and forth. You'll want to sweep it from kind of the side here. If we want to go in and check our depth, we can use this instrument here, this is in your issue, this is called the PLG7044. It has these markings there. So the marking that's closest to the end of the nib there, that's 1.5 millimeters, and the second one is 2 millimeters. So we can use that to check. That's right at about 1.5. And it's about 1.75, 1.5, about 2 there, 1.5. This is particular whenever you're working on uh, the mesial and distal part of the tooth, you'll notice that it, we tend to make things a little bit shallow. So this is especially critical to check in there. And also, uh, if you can't fit it into an area, like right there, that's kind of how you know that you need to open up a little bit more. See how I can't get the instrument can't force the instrument through there. And I believe that the width diameter of this instrument is one, so we need to be able to just open up a little bit more there. Also, one thing that it's not really shown too well on the camera, but I'll go ahead and zoom out a little bit, is the placement of a good finger rest when you're working on this area. My uh, ring finger is placed on either the teeth, right here, or on the gums, right here. On the patient, this is harder. You want to go for the teeth, um, but use that modified pin grasp with a ring, a very firm finger rest. Um, otherwise, you just won't be able to have that degree of control that you need. So if I can have it zoomed out, maybe this can show a little bit. With the finger rest. And get that to get in focus here. One thing that you'll want to keep in mind, too, especially, is the pre is the nice flowing outline form. You want to have a very nice flowing outline form, so that whenever you place the uh, restoration, uh, be it amalgam or composite, you don't have to guess where the finish line is. And so you can see. 
how nice and flowing this is all the way around. There's no jagged areas. Even though the outline curves, it's still free flowing there and pretty smooth. So this is about, about what you would want to have for your class one on a mandibular molar. If you want to see a maxillary molar, we can go ahead and do one of those real quick. Same principle applies, and I'll do this tabletop just for the camera's sake. Um, but if we wanted to do a class one, say we wanted to do like a little, um, like a little buckle extension out to the mesial here, and then do a DLG, the lingual groove as well. I can demonstrate that. Let's see if we can find a good way of getting this on there. It's a little bit harder to see with the shadowing. Let's see if we can get that to work. That'd be, that'd be nice. So we'll make a plunge cut in the central pit. And then work our extension buckle. Come back and work it mesially. Perhaps we'll want to go a little bit closer to the marginal ridge. And then for the distal lingual groove, I'll actually turn a little bit like this. What I like to do is come in here and lay the burr kind of flat like that, go in about a millimeter and a half, and then come up and traverse the distal lingual groove. Kind of hard to show just based on the camera angulation, but we'll do our best. So remember keeping the burp perpendicular to the occlusal plane. That gets the groove on the lingual. And then we can kind of come from the center of the distal lingual groove, drop our um, cut down to 1.5. And, and then to connect the two, we'll keep the burr on this part of the DLG at 1.5 and then just connect it here. That way we're not going too deep. So the initial connection is there. It's a little jagged, so we'll go back in there and clean it up. Once again, it's kind of hard to see, just based on how I have to aim the camera. Let's see if we can come at it from this way a little bit.
so that's opened up a little bit wider because the burr was turned a little bit this way. To get that undercut, I had to reangulate the burr a little bit and open up to a little bit more like that. So that's a little bit wider than you'd normally like to have. But otherwise, that's pretty much it. Now, I'll go ahead and pause this portion of the video and get set up to place the composite in.